Welcome to the next bowl making video. Uh, this is going to be a very simple quick one. Uh, there's two or three reasons I chose this one to do next. Uh, I already had the material. This is an offcut of the last bowl I made, the little crochet bowl. I bought a board of cherry for it and the offcut was the exact size for this uh, for this for the blank for this pattern. Uh, actually, it was maybe a half a quarter inch larger either way That plus this is a simple one. The last one was fretter complex and I got way behind due to weather problems and other things So we'll do a simple quick one here to try to get caught back up get back on my regular posting schedule It's the first time in two and a half years. I've missed posting on one of the two days that I normally do so Hopefully with this one. I'll get back to that and it uses up some material I already bought it's basically I almost like free material because I bought the, bought the material for my wife's birthday uh, bowl and that's done. So it's going to be quick and easy. Uh, not going to be any more pattern. Use each ring for the next pattern. I believe there's three rings. But I got to uh, set the uh, the saw for the first cut, getting me a blade in there. I've got a two, a number two. I need to get back to a number seven or a nine for this. So. Without any further ado, let me get it set up on the table saw and I'll show you the angles and everything when we get there. I'm not the table saw, the scroll saw. I'll set the table on the scroll saw for the right angle and uh, we'll get to cutting on it. Okay, I got the table set at 20 degrees. We'll make this outside cut and uh, then we'll, I think we'll do the same thing on the internal one, but we'll, we'll look at that when we get there. Right now we're just worried about cutting this outside one off. Okay, we're staying with 20 degrees. I use the edge of my piece here to set my uh, uh, drill press table to get the right angle so it would match the outside and uh, I've drilled the entry hole and I've got the blade through now I'm, I didn't say I'm using a number five Pegas modified geometry so I'm gonna cut this one and I think we we'll change angles but I'll worry about that when we get there Got that first ring cut and it's at 20 degrees. What I did, I set it on here, lined it up, make sure it was lined up real nicely with the uh, guidelines, held it down tight and drew the inner circle of the next ring. Now, then I went and I reset my drill press to 25 degrees and drilled an entry hole and I've reset this table to 25 degrees and that's what we're going to cut this. Uh, the internal part of this uh, uh, first ring or second ring and uh, then we'll I think we change every time but I'm just gonna worry about it one at a time this is the angle I know for this one and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it Okay, same process again. I put that ring on, drew the pattern. I went to the uh, drill press, changed my table to 35 degrees, drill me an entry hole. Now I've turned, I've changed this table on this saw to 35 degrees, and we're going to cut this ring at 35, and this will be the last ring. Well, it's all cut out. Uh, it all matches up very nicely. Inside is really nice. It's going to be uh, relatively, relatively easy to sand compared to some of the others I've had. Got some uh, drill marks I got to get out. But the matching up, it's very nice. It's going to be a minimum of sanding to match the bowl up. Uh, what I'm going to do next, though, I got this sandpaper and this uh, tile here, and I'm going to 
match these rings up, make sure there are no gaps. There's a now what can happen in those if you're doing this, these rings are flexible and there could be a little bit of a gap there and you put it in the press, it'll it'll push them together and glue them together. And you can do that on down the line all three or four of the uh, rings and do that. The problem is then if you don't match up between this ring and the base that's two very rigid pieces of wood and it's very difficult to get that out. You'd have to do a lot of sanding so it's just easier to match each one up. It's, uh, it takes minimum sanding to do that and it makes it much easier to get the base on without a gap in it. At least that's my experience anyway. So let me work on this and then I'll glue it up. When I'm sanding these, my first consideration is to match up the rings, and I go, I go down each joint and get it clear and clean. And you see, I can see a spot right there. Uh, shine that little light across it, you can see spots you don't see otherwise. You got to get a little shadow off of it and feel it with your fingernail. If there's a spot, I got to sand a little more. But I do that on all the joints, and then I come back and I work on these places where I drill the entry hole, and I try to even that out all the way through. Uh, that's the biggest challenge, but uh, let me go back to work on this and we'll check in on it later.
Well, that's uh, most of the sanding. I'll do some more uh, on the inside of the bowl. I'll do some shaping on the top part of it. I sanded it to uh, uh, 120 grit after I did that initial cleaning up. Got those, uh, it all sanded out pretty nicely. Got those uh, uh, grill marks out of it. This cherry sands pretty well. Doesn't give me a lot of trouble. So now I'm going to glue the base on. And then I'll get my flexible, a little two inch flexible pad sander. And we'll sand the outside of the bowl. And that's a little different, different, little different animal than that inflatable. I like that inflatable sander, but it takes a little practice and use to really get the feel of it. You can see the little sleeve wants to slide off of it. Uh, you can't inflate it too much. It won't be flexible enough. And then it also heats up as you are using it and it gets a little more, a little tighter on it. But still, it wants to slip up and down, so there's a little little trick to kind of keeping the pressure on it where it keeps it on as well as sanding at the same time. So let me glue this on. I'll switch out to my flexible pad sander and, and I will sand the outside of it. I'm going to use this little 2 inch flexible pad. <clears throat> As you can see, if you haven't seen one of these before, uh, that, plaid, uh, that pad is uh, like styrofoam, not styrofoam, but it's a foam, and it's flexible. It's got this hook and latch, Velcro type thing. This is a 60 grit. That's the most coarsest one I have. Even this can be replaced. It's, it's also Velcro. I've got some more of these, and I've got some more of these. And I've got a whole box of different grits. Uh, but I use that the most. Thing is, it really leaves some deep scratches. It takes a little work to get it out, but it, it's very aggressive and gets the board uh, matched up pretty quickly. So we'll start working on that with a 60 and get these rings all matched up and then work just like we did the inside and I'll work the uh, uh, grill marks out of it. They're even worse on the outside.
Well, I think I'm going to call that good on the sanding. I just narrowed that down a little bit. I didn't really uh, taper it off a lot. That's kind of thinned the top of it. <clears throat> and uh, didn't film all the sanding, but enough to kind of see how kind of what I do on a bowl like this. Now, if you got a, a straight-sided bowl like that one, uh, probably will use this. That works real well. It keeps everything straight. And it's round and uh, it works on good on the inside and the outside. All, all the actually on the outside of a bowl like that, I may go to the belt sander and then finish it off with a flexible pad sander because it's hard to get it perfectly smooth around. You get little ridges on this and the belt sander, and the little flexible pad sander will smooth those out. Just a little bit to touch up, <clears throat> touch up with it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to call this good. I rounded the bottom just a little bit. I think I've got the contours like I like it, like I want it. And it feels pretty good. It's not many dips and uh, raises in it. So I'm going to put a coat of finish on it. I've been using polyurethane because that's what I've got. And I'm going to put that on there and then we'll take a look at it. And that should bring that cherry out a little bit and make it a little richer, a little warmer. So let me get that done and we'll take a look at it. Okay, there's one coat on it. I'm going to call that good for this video. And as usual, I found a few tiny little spots I need to touch up. I can't barely see it there. It's kind of hard to see sometimes so you get the finish on it. Uh, but I'm pleased with it. It brought that cherry out pretty nicely. It's fairly evenly sanded. And... Uh, Kind of a neat little bowl. It's a quick little little job, and I mainly did it because I had the material left over from the other bowl. I did the little uh, crochet bowl, so that got two bowls out of that one board. And this gets me kind of back on schedule. I get this one finished and uh, video posted. So uh, I'm gonna call that good. I hope you like it. It's some kind of a simple little bowl, much simpler than the other ones I've been making. Uh, I'm getting, about to run out of her multi-angle bowls. I think I've got one more. I'm kind of gathering the material for it. makes two bowls at once. Uh, and then she gets into thin material bowls. And I've got plenty of thin material. I might not have what she used, but I've got plenty of thin material. And uh, I can use some of that up. I've got, actually got an excess of quarter inch and uh, such as that, five sixteenths and three eighths that sort of thing. So, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Uh, the, the thin material bows look like they get more into design and layering of different colors or types of wood. I haven't studied them in detail yet, but I'll do that. I'm not sure what I'm going to have next week if I'm going to get the material for the, the little two bowl set. Uh, I got some coming. Don't know if it'll make it on time. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed that and I uh, hope to see you in the next video.